The Kwamis are creatures who have mythical godlike power and capabilities. Strangely enough, they choose to coexist and live peacefully with humans, with a chosen few receiving a miraculous and the magical abilities that coincide with it. Their powers are so intense that without a wielder, they could significantly damage the world. The Kwamis are, without a doubt, the strongest creatures in the series, but surprisingly, they have their limits. In today's video, we're exploring the potential weaknesses that these mystical entities face. Number 1. Regular Sickness one of the strangest weaknesses of the Kwami is also the most human. The episode Princess Fragrance reveals that Kwamis can become ill over the most mundane things. An example shown in the series is when Tiki becomes ill after helping Marinette defeat a villain. Like humans, Kwamis attract illnesses when in the pouring rain or snow. It's likely not often that the magical creatures catch the common cold, but it was severe enough for Tiki to ask for Master Fu. Fortunately, the Guardian of a Miracle Box can heal a Kwame when they're sick and help in their recovery. Now that Marinette is the Guardian of the Miracle Box, that responsibility now falls on her. It's also important to note that returning to the Miracle Box or their Miraculous hasn't been shown to cure a Kwame of their ailments. If a Miraculous can heal its Kwame, then a future storyline in the series could explore what the Miraculous is capable of and how far the connection with its Kwame goes. Number 2. Limited Senses the Kwamis are capable of sensing each other's presence and powers. On special occasions like a Kwami's birthday, they can even conduct a ceremony where they connect, as seen in the episode Sandboy, when the Kwamis inside the Miracle Box try to find Nuru. However, the Kwamis' heightened senses have limitations, as many of the Kwamis were unaware of Dusu's activities for some time. This limitation may come from Kwamis being out of service inside the Miracle Box. We already know from Sandboy that the Kwamis kept inside the box are cut off from the outside world and have no idea what modern life is like. The predicament is why some Kwamis like Kalki speak and act as if they're from a different time. The Kwamis are shut off from the outside world in the Miracle Box and don't know what's happening beyond it. In the episode, Tiki can't hear a Marinette calling for her, even when she's just a few feet away. Number 3. Original Forms since the Kwamis were created based on abstract concepts, they existed well before the creation of the Miraculouses. Therefore, when a Miraculous gets destroyed, the Kwame connected to it returns to its original form. There are a few instances of this in the series, like in the episode Deflagration, when Plague cataclysms his Miraculous to keep Monarch from using it. If Plague returned to his original form, the humans around him were unaware of his presence. However, we know Plague's original form exists because Gabriel forces him and Tiki to reveal themselves in the episode Recreation. These original forms are immense, celestial, and meet expectations. Number 4. Injuries Transfer In addition to their unique superpowers, Miraculous Wielders gain enhanced speed, agility, and strength when they transform. These enhanced abilities keep them safe when fighting their enemies, and they rarely receive serious injuries. However, there are occasions when the heroes become wounded, and if they transform back, those wounds transfer to their Kwamis. Examples of this phenomenon occur in episodes like Oblivio, Miracular, and Psychomedian. It's most prominent in Oblivio when Ladybug and Cat Noir get struck by a power that makes them lose their memory. Tiki and Plague also can't remember what had happened, who they were, or how their miraculous worked. The effects didn't reverse until Oblivio was defeated, and Ladybug used her lucky charm. Number 5. Their intangibility has limits. One of the perks of being a Kwame is their ability to be intangible. They can move through walls, barriers, and most other solid objects. However, this unique power has limits. In the episode Kwame Buster, Mrs. Mendeliev receives the ability to trap Kwamis inside an object, which serves as a loophole for their intangibility. Once she traps Tiki and Plague inside her vacuum, they can't escape without help. Another limitation of the Kwame's intangibility is that it doesn't extend to objects. In the episode Scent Bubbler, Marinette becomes trapped inside a bubble. She wants Tiki to take the Ladybug Miraculous to Alia, but since the Miraculous is a solid object, it can't pass through the barrier with Tiki. Number 6. A Damaged Miraculous Although Miraculouses are magical, they are capable of becoming damaged. One of the most severe cases is the Peacock Miraculous, which remains broken until Season 4. A broken Miraculous has many side effects, the most notable being the decline in the health of its wielder to the point of immobility or death. The Peacock Miraculous caused the death of Emily, Natalie, and Colt Fathom before being fixed in the episode Truth. However, Dusu reveals in the episode that the broken Miraculous impacted her too. According to Dusu, having a damaged Miraculous was like having a mind trapped in chaos and living in a nightmare. Number 7. Food Madness one of the more unique weaknesses of the Kwamis appears in the episode Dearest Family. After the Dupain Chang family makes their famous galets, Tiki develops an incurable sweet tooth. Her desire for the dessert is so intense that she frightens her fellow Kwamis to the point where Sass sends Bark and Waze to watch her when she leaves Marinette's bedroom. Tiki can't control her cravings, but they have some serious consequences. When Marinette transforms into Ladybug, she feels the same hunger impacting her Kwami. The cravings are so intense that Tiki uses a lucky charm without Marinette, which creates a gallet capable of destroying Paris. 
Number 8. Energy Sources One of the earliest limitations established for the Kwamis is the amount of energy they possess. Since Ladybug and Cat Noir are children, they can only use their superpowers once before needing to transform back and feed their Kwamis to restore their energy. However, since Hawk Moth is an adult, he could use his powers more than once without Nuru needing to recharge. In the episode Evolution, Sass informs Gabriel that constant unification puts a tremendous strain on the wielder and the Kwamis alike. Due to Gabriel using numerous miraculouses and requiring the Kwamis to use their powers more than once, he has to feed them similarly to Ladybug and Cat Noir, or else they would run out of energy. Number 9. Loopholes One of the rules imposed on Kwamis is their inability to speak the name of their wielders. While the Kwami can say their wielder's name in casual conversation, if they are in a situation that could reveal their secret identity, they are prevented from speaking by a spell. The precaution protects heroes and guardians from enemies, but loopholes are possible. In the episode Destruction, Gabriel demands that the Kwamis tell him Ladybug's secret identity. When they are incapable, he has them take him to where Ladybug lives instead. The Kwamis, incapable of disobeying a direct order, take Gabriel to Marinette's bedroom. Fortunately, Marinette has planned for the occasion and managed to trick Monarch into leaving. Number 10. Kwamis Powers the Kwamis have many abilities that set them apart from other creatures in the Miraculous Ladybug universe. For many seasons, fans questioned if they were susceptible to other Kwamis' powers. After all, Plague never needed to use a cataclysm on Tiki, and the Kwamis never got targeted to become Gabriel's akumatized villains. Season 5 finally addressed these questions in the episode Deflagration. After Gabriel learns the secret identities of Scarabella and Kitty Noir, he sneaks into Collège Francois Dupont to catch them unaware. He successfully uses the Bee Miraculous's venom to paralyze the heroes and their Kwami. Tiki and Plague remain paralyzed even after returning to their Miraculous, and only come to when Gabriel revokes the effects. In Season 6, with Lila currently wielding the Butterfly Miraculous, she may find a new way to use her Miraculous to impact the Kwamis. Even though Gabriel never tried, he did akumatize the Renling, Mei Shi, in Miraculous World Shanghai. The Renlings and Kwamis are different creatures, but they're similar enough that Kwamis may be susceptible to akumatization after all. The Kwamis prove themselves as capable creatures unlike anything else in their world. The series wouldn't be the same without them, and if not for Tiki and Plague, Gabriel would have effortlessly overrun Paris with the powers he takes from Nuru. In the seasons to come, the Kwamis' weaknesses will undoubtedly impact how the heroes operate while protecting Paris. Luckily, now that the Kwamis have returned to their rightful wielders, they'll continue finding ways to persevere and save the day. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our uploads.